Prisma stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses, which is an evidence-based set of reporting guidelines developed to improve the transparency and quality of reporting in these types of studies. A Prisma flow diagram provides a visual overview of the different stages in a systematic review or meta-analysis, including the identification, screening, eligibility assessment, and inclusion of studies. It helps researchers and readers understand the study selection process in the review and any reasons for excluding certain studies. First go to Google and search for Prisma Diagram Template. Click on Prisma 2020 Flow Diagram. Then, download the first word template Prisma 2020 Flow Diagram for new systematic reviews which included searches of databases and registers only. This is the Prisma we downloaded, identification is first step. This is where you gather all the studies or papers you could potentially include in your review. You search in databases, like PubMed or Scopus, and collect every possible study related to your topic. The goal is to find as many studies as possible, even if some may not be relevant later, you find studies, but not all of them will end up in your review. This is just the beginning, you will remove some records before screening, duplicate records removed. These are studies that show up more than once, records marked as ineligible by automation tools, some studies are automatically flagged as not relevant based on your search settings. Records removed for other reasons, maybe the study is in a language you don't understand, or it doesn't meet your basic criteria, at the end of this stage, you have a list of studies that you need to screen further. Second step is screening. Once you have all the studies collected, it's time to sift through them. This step is like sorting the good apples from the bad ones. You quickly check the titles and abstracts, summaries, to decide if they're relevant to your research question. If they are, they move to the next stage. If not, they are excluded, reports sought for retrieval, you now gather the full texts of the studies that seem promising based on their titles and abstracts, reports not retrieved, sometimes, you can't get the full text for a paper, maybe because it's behind a paywall or the study is not available. These reports won't be included in your review. Next step is eligibility. Now that you have a smaller group of studies, it's time for the real check. In this stage, you read the full text of the papers. Here, you make sure each study fits all your criteria, like the type of research or the population studied. If a study doesn't meet the criteria, it's excluded from your review, you dive deeper into the studies to make sure they're a good fit for your research. This is the final quality check before inclusion. Last step is included, after all the exclusions and checks, you finally reach the studies that are included in your review. These studies have passed all the tests, and now you can use them to draw conclusions and answer your research question. These are the studies that make it into your review, and they provide the evidence you'll analyze and summarize. My example topic is effect of cognitive behavioral therapy on anxiety in college students, remember your research topic should be according to PICO framework. The PICO framework is a method used to formulate research questions by focusing on population, intervention, comparison, and outcome. In this research topic, population is college students, intervention is cognitive behavioral therapy, comparison is no therapy or other treatment, outcome is reduction in anxiety symptoms, next step is to make inclusion and exclusion criteria according to your research topic. Clear inclusion and exclusion criteria are essential because they ensure that the studies included in your review are relevant, rigorous, and directly address your research question. They help narrow down the focus, reduce bias, and ensure consistency in the studies you analyze. By defining what qualifies and what doesn't, you maintain transparency, improve the quality of your review, and make your findings more reliable and reproducible. To create clear inclusion and exclusion criteria, Start by defining the key characteristics of your study. For inclusion, specify the population, like college students with anxiety, the intervention, like cognitive behavioral therapy, the study design, like randomized controlled trials, and the outcomes you want to measure, like anxiety reduction using standardized scales. Ensure the studies meet these conditions to be included. For exclusion, identify what disqualifies studies, such as those with a different population, like non-college students, different interventions, like medication, or insufficient outcome measurements, like no pre- and post-anxiety data. Keep the criteria simple, specific, and directly related to your research question.
I have designed the following criteria for my research topic. Inclusion criteria, participants must be college students like undergraduate or graduate, age ranged between 18 to 30 years, diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder or anxiety symptoms, based on clinical criteria or self-reported scales, intervention, studies must focus on cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, whether individual or group-based. CBT must be delivered by a licensed therapist or trained professional. The study should measure the effect of CBT on anxiety symptoms using standardized assessment tools, like anxiety rating scale, study design, randomized controlled trials, quasi-experimental designs, or pre-post intervention studies. Must have a clear control group, e.g., students with no intervention, placebo, or alternative therapy, outcome. Studies must report quantitative outcomes related to anxiety reduction. Studies must include pre- and post-intervention measurements of anxiety, language, studies published in English, exclusion criteria, population, studies involving non-college students, like high school students, adults in non-college settings, studies with participants not diagnosed with anxiety or without clear anxiety symptoms, intervention, studies that focus on therapies other than cognitive behavioral therapy, like medication, mindfulness-based interventions, studies that do not include a structured CBT protocol, like self-help CBT or non-therapist-administered CBT, study design, case reports, case series, or non-experimental studies, like observational studies without any control group, studies without a control group or those that do not compare CBT with any form of baseline or alternative intervention, outcome, studies that do not measure anxiety symptoms or do not use standardized anxiety measurement scales, studies without pre- and post-intervention anxiety data, language, studies not published in English. Now that I have collected all articles related to my topic, you can see this video on how to collect articles using the collected paper tool. I believe there are around 25 articles. Now, we need to divide them into those from databases and those from registers, remember, PubMed, Elsevier, and Taylor Francis are databases, while clinical trials articles are registered. Registered articles typically include studies or trials that are planned or ongoing and registered in official databases before they begin. These include clinical trials, observational studies, and systematic reviews that researchers want to track or share publicly. So now, I will input the database numbers into the Prisma diagram. When selecting articles, be sure to keep a separate Word file with records of the databases. For example, note how many articles were selected from specific databases like PubMed. Then, copy and paste these into the diagram. Now, we will check for duplicate articles. To remove duplicates, we will use MyBib. You need to enter the article link or DOI, and MyBib will generate the citations. If there are duplicate records, MyBib will alert you that they already exist. After removing duplicate articles, the total number of articles is now 21. I have updated this in the Prisma diagram. I removed four duplicate records and did not use any automation tools. There were no records removed for other reasons. As all the collected articles are in English, for screening, the total number of articles remains 21. I will now exclude articles based on their titles and abstracts. While excluding articles based on titles and abstracts, remember to align with your research topic. My topic is the effect of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, on anxiety in college students. For example, the first article discusses anxiety and depression among social science education students. This is related to my research topic, and the methods section mentions undergraduate students. Such small details in titles and abstracts are crucial. Another article mentions foreign language learning anxiety. I will exclude this because it specifically addresses language learning anxiety, which is not related to my topic. Similarly, another article focuses on Iranian males with addiction. I will exclude this because the population in my research topic is students. In another case, an article does not explicitly mention a student population in its title, but upon reading the abstract, it refers to university freshmen. Although my focus is on college students, the inclusion criteria I set include an age range of 18 to 30 years. Therefore, I will not exclude this article. In contrast, 
another article relates to my topic but does not involve a student population, so I will exclude it. By repeating this method, I excluded a total of five articles. Now, five articles have been excluded, and 16 articles remain. We also need to document the reasons for exclusion based on the titles and abstracts. The section, Reports Not Retrieved, refers to cases where articles or PDFs are inaccessible. However, all the articles I collected are downloadable. For accessing articles freely, you can use Science Hub. Please see my video in the description for instructions on using Science Hub to download articles. The reports not retrieved total is zero, and a total of 16 articles will be evaluated for eligibility. Now, ChatGPT can prove very helpful for screening articles based on text analysis. In the ChatGPT prompt, I first instructed it to exclude reports based on the inclusion and exclusion criteria that we discussed earlier. Now, I will copy the article names and only the methods of five articles, and paste them here in ChatGPT. We need to repeat this procedure for screening all articles. I will screen five articles together, remember, we have a total of 16 articles, as you can see, ChatGPT has included and excluded articles, and it has also mentioned reasons for inclusion and exclusion. Out of the five articles, only one article is excluded. Now, I will repeat this procedure with the remaining 11 articles. After repeating this procedure with the other articles, ChatGPT has excluded five articles. I copied the exclusion reasons from ChatGPT and pasted them here in the Prisma diagram. Now, studies included in the review will be 11, and reports of included studies will be 0. Reports of included studies refers to the published reports or papers for the studies that are included. In some cases, multiple reports can exist for one study, particularly if the study was published in parts, had supplementary reports, or had data published across different journals or sources. The 11 studies we included, you can check the acknowledgement section of those articles and see if there is mentioned about follow-up studies. Just as an example, reports of included studies, n equals 13, could mean that 11 studies are included, but there are 13 separate reports or papers, possibly due to follow-up publications or different datasets published separately, associated with those 11 studies. I have already checked the 11 articles, but none of the articles have publications or follow-up reports. So, now the Prisma diagram is completed, please like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.